very much, um, David, for including one of my poems in this beautiful anthology, Past, Present, and Future. Um, during the Second World War, my father was one of many Jews rounded up by the gendarmes, in other words, the French police. And uh, my father was um, put into Gorse, which was a concentration camp in the French Pyrenees. He ended the war in Saint-Denis, which was a prisoner of war camp um, outside Paris. This poem is a tribute to my father. Welcome to Britain. My father came here, hooked to the side of a Douglas Dakota after Paris was liberated and he left his camp. He came to do war work or volunteer. We were British from Bukhara for generations. We had huge white documents which said so. We traded with the Cottonopolis of Manchester when the American fields burned during the Civil War. We'd interceded with the Emir for the lives of Connolly and Stoddard, consigned to his snake pits. But we were strangers when we came to where I'd be born, go to grammar school, find language, literatures, history, geography, to add to my own. Um, my new book is a series of versions after Semyon Israelovich Lipkin, and I'm indebted to both the Poetry Society Poetry Book Society for giving it an award and recommending <coughs> it, and also to uh, Smith Doorstop for taking a risk and publishing it in the first place. Um, Lipkin is a poet whose own poetry was never published until he was in his 70s because he was a Russian poet. So what he did all his life was that he translated poets which from cultures and languages which Stalin was trying to obliterate, which Stalin wanted to consign to the past. And he had an encyclopedic knowledge of many cultures. Um, and like my grandparents on both sides, he was very well respected in Central Asia. Khara, which I've mentioned in the last poem, was in Central Asia, remains on the borders of Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. So um, many of these versions refer to Islamic culture in that region, um, uh, Ouijar culture, the Ouijars are still having trouble in that region today. Many people from the region of Central Asia, but the one I want to read to you now is about Moldavian. Now the Moldavian language, um, it's not a translation. This was a poem of Lipkin's where he talks about the Moldavian language from which he had previously translated many poems. So what you might need to know is Moldavian was written in, um, in Roman letters as opposed to the Cyrillic, which Stalin wanted everyone to think in, write in, digest in, dream in. Yeah? So, the way Stalin would approach a language or a culture is he would arrest the men, take them to Siberia, and eliminate a culture in its entirety. So here's a poem which Lipkin wrote and which was eventually published um, called Moldavian is a Language. And it's a poem in which he exhorted the Moldavian men who were in Siberia to hold on to their culture, not to forget who they are. Moldavian is a language which hauls in the dark. After the last of sunsets banished, 
by its rugged horse and cart. Can you hear the swagger of its coppery verbs, the Latin of a convict's dagger, not the Senate's words? The capital's heights have crumbled, its artifacts lie low. Only the Denista's wind-blown grumble keeps the Roman known. The songs are desperate outlaws, snipe at the words of the ruler, clatter once they've stopped their chores at night beyond the Vorkuta. To earn a bit more dinner, a puff of a cigarette, the shivering political sinner is singing aloud and yet. His Ovid is adapted here, crude but still astute. Don't segregate yourselves for fear of thief or prostitute. Desperation makes us equal as we sing and speak. We each contain the sequel to the other's peak. Mama Liga and wine at dawn give courage to my gullet, and my words are more than brawn as short-lived as a bullet. One day you'll all be literature. I've read the Almighty's book. That's why I had to come here, to know, to listen, to look. pleased to say that after he was published in his 70s, he became a leading poet in Russia. He is, he is recognized as their leading World War II poet. And uh, I commend him to all of you. Uh, and uh, he's now, this is the first time he'll be known in the West, and I'm hoping everybody will be translating him and taking an interest in him. He's, he's quite remarkable. Um, and then, if I may, I'll just read something of my own from this book called The Essay, which I'm also very much indebted to Smith Doorstop for publishing it. Um, um, uh, at this, uh, th there were Jews in Central Asia, in Bukhara, for 2,700 years, so they predate the Islamic um, regime there. And we have our own language, which was called uh, Judeo-Tajik, Bukharian. So in this poem, I'm, not, I'm going to have some foreign words, but they are translated <laughs> within the body of the poem. Um, and uh, once there was an emir, there was Sharia law um, in Bukhara, and that affected the way that everybody lived. So in 2005, press reports um, reported polls in which English Muslims hold both as wanting to live under Sharia law and as not knowing what it was. So I was a barrister for many years and, and so I wrote this poem about something called Dimmi, which is a tenet of Sharia law dating from the 7th century to the present, which accords freedom of religion together with protection from persecution to Jews and Christians, but not to others. Um, and uh, the way you obtain this status of being dimmi is to, um, ex uh, is to pay a certain tax and to behave in a certain way with the local dimmi lord. And we had such a lord in Bukhara. Dimmi. Dimmi under Sharia law says Jew or Christian, Gavnezan, don't speak. Dimi says, Mekusham, be careful. Dimi says, Darabin, close the door. Dimi says, even inside, be on guard. Dimi's Bukharian grandchild can teach Europe how faster to bend the knee. I forgot in your schools, but now I am reminded. 
Build your house lower than a Muslim's. Wear yellow raiment. Hang a cloth from your window to identify your home. If you get hit or insulted by a Muslim, say thank you. Don't ride a camel or a horse, but an ass or a donkey, and dismount if a Muslim approaches. For you are less than the khar, beast of burden. If a Muslim approaches, step off the pavement. Lower your eyes and bend your back before him. Dimmi says you may not bear witness against a Muslim. You must guard against any derogation from Islam and be prepared for a beating as you pay your tax for protection. Dimmi says contain women, hide aspiration and wealth. Reprise conversation with Hamdelillah, if Allah wills it, and Mashallah, thanks to Allah's will. Dimmi says, move as one, pray as one, think as one. Dimmi says, you must leave your face in the mirror of your protector's sect. You must think about inner or actual conversion, forced or pragmatic. Dimmi says, you must infantilize your household and protect it with rubric. <laughs>